Hey coaches, how you guys doing? Hey, it's been a couple weeks. As you guys, hey, if you guys are uh, a log on, let me know that you guys can hear okay, and you guys can see me okay. There we go. Just a couple checks. So yeah, it's it's been a uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've been live in this group. Um, obviously, we we wrapped up and we did the three day uh, the Princeton office the three day mastermind and uh, nothing but nothing but good reviews nothing but but um, uh, love from you guys uh, about all the the value that we gave away um, all the uh, just how much teaching that we did um, as you guys are coming on live or if you're watching this replay let me know uh, in the comment section hey coach I'm here uh, let me know again where, where you guys are watching from um, but um, I just want to say thanks everyone for the for the three-day mastermind that was just that was a fantastic uh, and a whirlwind uh, of three days of, of teaching hoops on the board. I mean, holy cow, we went um, we went nearly six, uh, well, I was probably live for over seven hours um, uh, during those three days. So that was just, that was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Um, I know everyone in the group, every, everything that I've seen, everyone uh, thought that was great. And, um, and uh, you know, one of these days will be, it'll be fun to do that three day live thing again. So, um, so I really appreciate you guys uh, being there for that. Um, I did want to do a, a quick, um, uh, a lot. I've been fielding a lot of questions about um, the simp or about the, the complications of putting the offense together and actually installing it and where to start. A lot of coaches are saying, um, "Oh, Michael, when am I going to do that again?" Uh, you know what? I, I've only done it. I've done about three of them this year in 2020. Um, I'm not going to do another one um, this calendar year. Um, I thought about maybe doing. I'm still up in the air. I either either do like one or two a year, probably one or two a year. Um, so I'll either do one in the spring or one in next fall. I have not have not totally decided, but I won't do more than two. That's I mean that's a that's a really big event um, to do that kind of uh, that kind of mastermind. So um, I'll probably one or two probably next year, next spring, next uh, next fall. So, um, but uh, but were you able to watch it? If if you if you were able to watch it, let me know in the comments that you watched it. If you missed it, if you didn't, were not able to watch it, let me know as well. But um, but the questions I've been fielding a lot. I've been seeing them in the group. They've been asking, you know, uh, where where do you where do you start? How do you make? The, a lot of coaches are still hung up, and and I, I think when I when I get some private messages, they're still hung up on, um, you know, I think you're I think a lot of coaches make it a lot more complicated uh, than what you need to. And I wanted to share something that we so we actually we started so if if you saw the three A mastermind, you know that we're doing an eight week workshop and we just finished the first week of the workshop um, uh, just last night. Last night was uh, we we trained we're doing three days a week so we're doing Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays we're doing live trainings um, for the coaches inside the program, and we just finished the work the first week. And what we really focused on was one just getting getting the core stuff in. We we went over the core four sets again. But we went into a lot more detail. We did a lot more with the defense. Where's the defense going to be on every single pass, every single cut? Um, and then we really talked about um, – uh, well, we did do a prep week. So we did talk about how do we really simplify the offense. And I kind of wanted to share with you real quick um, one of the, the revelations that has kind of come to me over the last – really just over the last uh, month – a uh, month, maybe two months ago, I, I kind of had this like, well, what if we do it this way? So if it's okay, I want to show you um, how I simplified the offense and, and, and share a little bit of what I'm teaching uh, to the coaches who are actually, uh, to who, who got inside the program, who are inside the eight-week workshop. And uh, let me pop over here to my other screen. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Hopefully I still pop up in the corner. Yeah, there we go. So what I came up with, and, and inside the mastermind, we talked about all four of these sets. There are four core sets. Um, and what I've done is I've put them in what I call this the uh, Princeton Offense Core 4 Quadrant. And we've got the Low Post Series, the Chin Series, the Point, and the Open Series. Now, depending on your – because everyone's asking, say, you know, where do we start? Where's the best place to start? Um, what do I put in first? Do I put in Low Post first? Do I put in Chin first? Do I – you know – you no, know, and, and those are the kind of questions that I've been uh, asked that I've been fielding. So what I when I put this together and we, when we actually I taught I taught this for the first time uh, a week ago Monday. Then we re reinforced it this week again as well. Look at your personnel, and, and everyone inside this group has has should have been able to download the player personnel form and, and the underdog sheet uh, worksheet as well. 
Um, those are should be inside uh, uh, one of the unit folders. Or scroll down and find a post. I, I know I've posted that over and over again in, in a group, and I know other members have as well. But look at your personnel. If you have a five-man that you want the ball, that, that you want your offense to focus on, you want to uh, really focus on getting the ball down there into the low post. So if you want to start there with the low post, um, what I'm telling our coaches, hey, start here in the low post quadrant. Okay, so and when and we're going to put low post in first. Okay, and there's going to be uh, a series of, uh, of of counters and phases and wrinkles that that specifically um, work well with the low post with the low post series. And that's what we're telling coach. So don't worry about, hey, when do I put in low post and chin or low post and point or do I, which of the two or three do I put in? So we just put in one or the, just we just start in one quadrant. So I've got coaches that have a low post player that, hey, this is the focal point of our offense. This kid's a stud. We want to start here. So we're going to start with low post and we're going to put in the low post series and we're going to walk through every single progression all the way through the low post series. Okay, now the low post is not one that's easily run as a continuity. Okay, so it, it will it will phase or counter into the next series. So what we did is we went through the most natural and the, the most simple um, uh, phases and counters, and we worked through all of those, okay, until we have a until we end end in a place where we can now easily transition to the next thing. I, I know I know that's kind of a lot, it's kind of confusing without um because uh, I don't again if I Keep going down. It's, it it kind of goes. Each one of these will go down its own little rabbit hole, and I don't want to uh, to overcomplicate it. So we'll we'll teach low post, and we'll teach our low series, and we'll teach uh, easily. You know how to get in, say, to the point series, and what do we do after that, and what do we do after that, and then we'll we'll finish that that core. For, we'll finish that quadrant of the low post. Okay, and then what happens is once that is in, once the foundation is in, which we can put in, and uh, we we just uh, last night so we did a breakout session. And we build out the practice plans for the low post and chin series um, and for the core four quadrant. So if you're only putting in the low post, I, I plan the first three practices. And in three practices, or actually in two practices, we have the entire low post uh, quadrant installed. And then on day three, we're looking, okay, now what do we want to pull in here? Do we want to pull in something from the point series? Or do we want to pull in the chin series next? Or do we want to pull in the open series? And again, you go back and look at your personnel and say, well, you know, our five man is really good in low post, but he's not very good on the perimeter. Okay, so if he's not a good passer, he, maybe they're, they're good good in the paint, good scoring, but they're not a good passer, then I don't want to run the point series. Um, but I might want to run chin. Okay, and if we want to run the chin now, the five man can play up, up top, but they won't have to handle the ball as much. Okay, so conversely, if, if you have a five man that, uh, that uh, you do not want the ball in their hands in the low post, then we would start you in the chin quadrant, okay? And then we would teach chin all of way, all of the, all of the way through, and we're, and we uh, actually taught um, a, a couple actions, a couple uh, one counter and one phase um, that are different ways to get into the chin series. And we built a practice plan last night that uh, you can install this entire chin quadrant in in the first two or three practices. And what that does is is now you get, you have a simple way to start the offense or start installing the offense. And then if you want to say, well, you know, we don't want our five-man handling the ball. Okay, so chin is a great place to start. Um, maybe they're good enough to hand, maybe they're good enough to catch it and, and hit another, and to catch it, take one dribble, and maybe hand it off to a kid. Or maybe they're a decent enough passer that, hey, we're going to grab some, some of the point series and bring it in here. Okay, or you might want to bring, say, well, he's decent enough that we can, or she's decent enough that we can bring in some of the open series to our chin stuff. Okay, or you can run, uh, you can also run open without throwing the five man the ball. Okay, and that's something that we're, we're going to get into with, with the, uh, inside the workshop as well. Okay, uh, for coaches who are, um, who have a five man who is good with handling the ball, maybe not a low post threat. Maybe you don't want the ball to go in low post, but they're actually, uh, maybe you're playing small ball and you have a five man who, uh, um, who can handle the ball, who's a good passer, good decision maker, might want to, and you have a good set of guards, um, we're telling our coaches, hey, you might want to start with the point series. Now we now there's point uh, screen away, point over the top, point down the middle. We don't want to run all, um, we don't want to run all four um, or all three of those options. We want to start with one. So the point series, we would actually, for example, start with point screen away because point screen away easily transitions into um, any one of these other sets, we can easily get back into low post, chin, or open. So 
once we put in point, uh, once we start in the point quadrant, put a point screen away, now we can go, hey, do you want to roll? Do you want to phase into chin? Well, let's bring some stuff from chin over. Do you want to phase into open? We can bring some stuff from open into that. So once we get through the first three days of practice, um, installing the point, getting the foundation in, now it's okay, now what's next? What do we want to, what do, what matches our personnel next? Like, well, um, our, so our five man is not a good low post score, but they're good handling the ball. I like our five man handling the ball, or or maybe you have a maybe you have a guard running the five man spot, so point works out well. Well, let's I think open works well with that. So let's grab some of the open stuff, okay, and let's drag that up into the point quadrant. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, if if you're watching this live, let me know. If you're watching this on replay, let me know if that makes sense. Um, so that this way that you're not because a lot of coaches they they look at the entire offense and they get overwhelmed. You might have gone through that three day mastermind and said, man, there's there's all of this action, low post, corner, cut, screen away. Which one do I put in first? Um, there's there's the chin series. There's point screen away, over the top, down the middle. There's open. What happens if you go back door or get handoffs? You know, there, there's all kinds of and, and everything's a little bit different. So uh, a lot of coaches are still like, well, where exactly, you know, should I start? And I don't want to overcomplicate it. And, and it and it can be overwhelming. So we came up with this this core four quadrant um, to kind of simplify. We just focus on the first two or three days of practice. Just one of these four quadrants, um, and then um, and then once we get that foundation put in, then we're going to go drag pieces. Well, I, I saw you do this in chin, so I, I think I'm going to drag that into my point stuff. Or or I like um, we're playing small ball and and you know we go point screen away. Then we can easily phase into open, and I like that action. So let's drag open up into our point series, and then we can start layering on uh, on on top of your offense. So we have a, a good simple way. Uh, to start the offense, and then um, and then transition, and then now we can start bringing you know, a little more complicated, or not more complicated, but just bringing in other actions from other quadrants. Okay, if you guys have any questions about that? Let me know. Now, if you um, if you if you're very athletic, um, or if you um, want to play small ball, you might want to consider starting right in the open series because the open series spreads the floor out. Um, a lot of coaches compare when I when I taught uh, the open series. A lot of coaches are like, "Well, this is kind of like the read and react." It is a lot like the read and react, and um, it's like the read and react, but there's more structure. Okay, um, it's it's a little bit more controlled. So if your players are cutting and getting out of whack, and and really, and, and then and then what happens is kids stop because it's not the same every time. I wouldn't say it's the same every time. The actions are similar, um, but like in the read and react, you'll start cutting, and then one kid's going to forget the fill. Okay, and a lot of it is that it's, it's one how it's taught. And two, it's just a little. Uh, the kids have a little bit more freedom. They can cut, but they can go left or right. Okay, if they go right, then something is happening. If they cut and they go left, then something else is happening. And one one kid's gonna. It, it happens so fast. Sometimes your kids are gonna forget. Okay, what what to fill? Where the where the open series in Princeton is a little bit more structured, to where they're gonna have predefined actions, but they're still gonna have options whether they go back door, whether they come get a handoff, whether they get a curl. Okay, whether they get a ball screen, whether they reject the ball screen, all of that's going to be the same, but it all flows back into the same stuff. That's why um, I actually think Princeton is a lot simpler than than uh, uh, than a lot of coaches. Um, they look at it, get over once, and man, that's that looks so complicated. I saw them run that on on uh, um, saw that college team run that on TV. Man, I don't, I don't that, that it's so complicated. I don't think we can simplify it any, but you really, really can. So um, we 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 went for about two hours teaching this core four quadrant, and kind of going through it, and then. And then this week we really reinforced that, and I'm getting a lot of a lot of feedback inside the workshop that that if you are not sure where to start with your offense, pick one of these four one of these four series, um, one of the, get get put your team in one of these quadrants. Say okay, we're only going to focus on this one, okay. And then once you get that one in, and I'll I'll have this planned ahead. You should have this planned ahead more than just your first three days of practices. You should know. Um, well, you you might you might look at your personnel and you get these first three days in and say, okay, now which one do I want to drag in? In day four, five, six, you might. Well, let's we're starting with low post. Hey, let's also put the chin stuff in. Let's start adding chin on day four, day five of practices. Um, and then it's then it's more simple. That it's a lot more simple that way. So if if that makes sense, give me a quick thumbs up uh, in the comments. Okay. So that's some of the stuff that we've been teaching in the workshop. I said we just got started. We did a prep week. Um, we did a. Uh, we just finished week one, which which a lot of coaches are they're they're sending me messages like 
it's like, man, it's like, you know, after uh, <laughs> there, it was after the prep, we uh, I had a coach send me a, a message on Friday. It's like, hey, it's like the sponge is starting to dry. It's like, I can't wait to start up next week. And they were really pumped about it. So um, I want to, uh, I've got one more thing to share with you. But for any of the coaches who are live, do you guys have any Princeton questions? Just any general questions? If you have any general questions, I, I've got, um, I can't be on here for a whole lot longer. I thought I'd go on for about 20, 25 minutes. But if you guys have any general Princeton questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them, okay? Uh, because I'm getting a lot of questions about the workshop and I wanted to um, I wanted to uh, share a couple of that uh, for some of those coaches. So if you're playing small ball, hey Josh, so if you're playing small ball uh, and you have an excellent passer as a big man, is open or point better? So um, let me ask you, Josh, are you, you're playing small ball, but do you have a lot of good guards or just one or two? That would determine. So if I've got a if I've got a good passer, you're playing small ball, and I've got a really good passer as a five man. Um, you have to run. I think you really you have to put in open. Now, if you have a if you have three guards that are really good, or or even if, if all four guards are, are are pretty darn confident and can really play, I would probably start with the point series. If you got one really good passer, and then maybe one or two really good guards, and then a couple one or two really good role, decent role players. Um, then I would start with the open series because the open series, there's not as much um, the the, com the complexity of what your players have to do uh, is, is not as complex in the open series as it is in the point series. So I would say if you're more skilled, start in the point series. I would say if you're less skilled, start with the open series. Yes, yeah, so you've got a great big passing man. You've got you got ten good guards. Yeah, I would I would consider starting with point with with that group of guys. With that group of kids, boys or girls, yeah. Um, and I would always, always, always start with point screen away, okay. And there, there's a reason for that because point screen away uh, transitions into the the next thing easier than point screen over the top or point down the middle, which both of those can phase into the next set or the next series or whatever the next thing step is in the offense. Um, but I would um, start with if you're going to run point, always start with point screen away. Put point screen away in first, okay. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Very good. Yeah. Hey, Gabe. So your best player is your point guard. Uh, do you start uh, him elsewhere to avoid him passing and cutting away uh, from the ball? Yeah, see, that is – okay, so – okay, I'll, I'll answer this one for you. There are multiple ways to get into the low post series. Um, so uh, we're working uh, – and our coaches uh, – that uh, that are bought that are bought and are in the workshop bought the program or in the workshop we actually talked about this um, on this Monday so if um, so let me just let me just show you here real quick what do you do if your points the best player but you don't want and you want to run low post so so Gabe's question if you your points point guard's the best player you want to run low post but you want your point guard to, to stay in the action so what would I do so this is what I would do. I would still, because you want you want your best point guard to bring the ball up the floor, especially if you're being pressured, right? Okay, so one thing that we started doing, uh, I started doing this. It took me a couple years before I figured this out, but I started doing this on year three. Um, and actually, I used my, it's kind of a funny story. I used my, I, I, I couldn't get my freshman and JV coach, or I'm sorry, we were in between freshman and JV coaches. Uh, so I coached my freshman and JV teams at, at the summer league. And it was kind of, it wasn't a full summer league, so... They would get there, and sometimes we would have a half hour or an hour before uh, the game. So I actually was actually practicing with the kids uh, a half hour, hour before they played. And then we would go play, and they would execute this. And at the JV freshman level, they got all kinds of layups out of this. Um, it's a little more difficult at the varsity level just because they're more disciplined defensively. But it's it's still a good way. It's still a great way to um, – I'm talking about that that point going back to our low post. It's still a great way to do that. So I want to show you how we we how do you keep the one man involved in low post. So normally what we would do is we throw the ball to the wing, and then everyone's kind of jumping to the ball and, and moving their spots, and the one man would cut away, right? So the one man defender would would come down here and probably stop, and then we're filling the point, the wing in the corner. So what Gabe wants to know is, is now now our, our best player is way down here, and there has to be a Whatever you do next in low post, there has to be a lot of action for the one man to get the ball again. Okay. So what we started doing, because I had I uh, when we I think it was it was my third year, we were very guard heavy. So I didn't have to do this because we always had a good guard coming to get the ball. 
But I wanted to give our, our players the option. So if our point guard, you know, whoever grabbed the rebound was our point guard. Um, and we, we wanted them to uh, to be able to keep making good decisions. So what we did was we wanted the ball back in their hands. So we throw the ball away, and we would do something uh, that we call screen the point. Okay, this is uh, one of about five, uh, four or five or six entries um, that I've used before to enter low post. And what we're going to do is, is one man's going to make this pass. X1 is going to jump to the ball. X2 is going to jump to the ball. Four man's going to drop a little bit. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to do what we call screen the point. So I'm going to get try to get past the midline. And the one's going to come down and start chopping their feet, squaring up, timing it with the two man. And the two man is going to come down here about two-thirds of the way, start breaking down, chopping their feet. And boom, we're going to either tight curl or back door. Either way, X, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be X1 here. If we go back door, X1's going to, Probably react and help a little bit, but if, you, if you're still having trouble getting this kid open, we'll come here and we will do a tight curl, and the one man is going to pop to the point. So now the one man, okay, we can get the ball to very easily. So if we're going to run the next step in the offense, now our two man's cutting through, our one man's trying to catch up, our two man's chasing out. Okay, now whether you throw the ball down here to the five or you can throw the ball up here to the one and, and get into the next step of the offense or whatever, whatever you're running after. Now, you, now your one man's got the ball. Okay, we talked about that in the workshop a lot because now the one man has a, they actually have a lot of options uh, here. They can they can run point, they can run uh, uh, counters to point, they can run um, wrinkles right out of that. But the one but the ball is back in your one man's hand. Okay, good question, Gabe. Yeah, and, and that that's something that that we didn't teach in the mastermind because um, there's a, there's many many different ways to get in the office. But we were teaching stuff like this in the workshop. So there's all kinds of questions like well. But my, my best player is one of these one of these two wing players. You know, how do I get them the ball where I want to? And, and we're breaking that kind of stuff down. That's what we're really doing deep dives with uh, uh, in, in the eight-week workshop. Okay. Any other quick questions? Um, let, me, let me kind of show you real quick a little sneak peek of what we're doing in the workshop week by week. So that's a good question. So we actually we worked on, on that on week one. So... Um, so the week after we had the three-day mastermind, we, we did a prep week. We talked about philosophy, mindset, detail, skill work. So I, I introduced that core four quadrant. Um, then we talked about skill work one day. Then we talked about um, the progression method and how we actually install it and practice plans going step by step. So we kind of introduced that kind of just kind of a prep week. It was kind of a real easy, laid back week, not, not very scripted or structured. Uh, and then this week, we just finished um, going through week one, which is the... Um, we did all the X's and O's. We went through the core four plus the flash series. God, we taught for two and it was more than a little more than two and a half hours um, breaking down the core four. So when I did the core four with with uh, uh, during the mastermind, we spent about an hour um, break you know breaking down all four of those sets. Where I spent about two and a half hours uh, breaking them down a week one. So we we did a lot. So a lot of coaches like, well, what if this happens? What do you do next? Or what happens if you get stuck here? What, and that's the kind of stuff that we're we're teaching. It takes a lot more time. Um, that's why we we put together this eight week thing because it takes a lot of time for me to teach everything um, that's in the offense. So what we're doing next week is we're going to take the that core four plus the flash series, and we're going to break down every phase. Now a phase is how do you get from low post to chin? How do you get from point to open? How do you? That's what we're going to be breaking down next week. Um, all of the counters. The counters are well. I'm running point, but what happens if point's not open? Well, we have two or three or four counters that we can run out of that. Um, uh, or, or if you're running chin, are there any, if they take away that guard to guard, what can I do? Or if they take away the guard to forward, what can I do? Or if the drift's not open, okay, how do I counter that? And, and we're, that's what we're going to be talking about next week. Um, we're going to start breaking down uh, uh, some wrinkles next week and a lot of different entries to the offense. This is, this is like the missing key stuff. So week one's like the core stuff, like the core four offense. Um, I just went into a lot deeper detail uh, during week one than I did during the mastermind. And then the phases and the counters and the wrinkles. And, and these are all the missing keys. These are all the little things that that a lot of, especially new coaches, they and even uh, coaches who've dabbled in it and run it a little bit. This is this this is where everyone gets hung up. So week two is like one of the big weeks um, uh, that we're we're going to kind of unlock all of the. With, we're going to give you like all all the missing keys, unlock the entire offense for you. And then week three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and break down uh, how to install the offense and build out your practice plans. So it's going to be a very progression method. So we talked about the progression method. This is going to be like 
um, super deep dive. You know, what do you do? What do you teach first? What do you teach second within each core four set within each phase count? Which, which phase do you teach first out of low pose? What counter do you teach first? Uh, and it kind of goes back to our core four quadrants. That's what we're doing week three with the coaches in the program. Um, week four, we're going on a deep dive. So there, there's multiple ways to run low posts. There's like uh, point screen. Let's, let's take a point screen over the top, for example. You can run point screen over the top and you can run run it three or four different ways. We just covered one of those ways during week one. During week four, I'm going to break that down and probably show the other three or four ways that you can run point screen over the top because you can run it as more of an up-tempo or if you need to run it more deliberate, uh, you run it a different way. So so um, and like I said, when we go point screen over the top, we go back door. Well, if you keep going, you can you can fill out, you can come back in the pose, you can there's there's all kinds of different actions that you can run in point screen over the top, um, but it just kind of depends on one your personnel and two what kind of style do you want to play? Do you want to be up tempo? Do you have to be more deliberate to compete? Um, so if you're you're an underdog type team and you need to run more offense, um, there's there's other little 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 instead we can we can run a. a um, different cuts or different screens on the backside to try to open up baseline drives and to try to um, get easier shots or or um, uh, to try to, so you can run point screen over the top and get drifts or you can point screen over top and run back door stuff you can get ball screens out of it. there's all kinds of different stuff and that's a lot of what we're going to be talking in in week four so two and a half hours uh, uh, on week one on the core four and then week four is now we're going to do another two two and a half hours just getting into all of the other options um, out of the core four. So you can run low post two or three different ways. You can run uh, point screen over the top, point screen away, point down the middle. You can run each of those two or three different ways each. Uh, the open series, there's all kinds of different ways. We can run open with, as a spread. We can run open tight. Um, those are all the kinds of stuff that we're going to be talking about in week four. Uh, week five, um, we're going to talk about controlling tempo. And this is, so we're, we kind of have all the hardware in through week four, but week five now, how do you really, I mean, if, if you've got the advantage, how do you really ramp it up and run this offense fast? Okay, that's what we're going to talk about week five. Or, hey, we are we are really the underdog. We're playing a team that's probably going to beat us by 20. You know, how can we try to get that game down to 10? So that's, you know, how do you really slow down the game and force them to play your, your style? And that's what we're going to talk about week five. And then we're going to talk about all the wrinkles, all the quick hitters, week six. This is, this is kind of a fun week. It's a creative week. Um, because you have all the core stuff in, and now how do you run it? Uh, how do you run all of your wrinkles? How do you run all of your quick hitters? Um, what do you, uh, um, you know, this is where like like chin. There's probably like I probably have in my my database right now about 15, 20 different wrinkles that you can run out of the chin series. You can if you're only putting in chin, you know, there's about there, like I said I've got about 15 or 20 of them um, that you can actually say, hey, let, well, let's run chin low, let's run chin black, let's run chin number, let's run chin Ohio, let's run this, let's run that. Um, let's run a counter this way. Let's let's run chin, but let's spin. Let's run chin over, um, and there, there's all kinds of different, uh, and that and that's only the chin series. So we're going to do that uh, throughout the entire offense on week six. Um, there might be so many that I might have to do a breakout session on wrinkles only because there there are so much. Um, week seven, we're going to talk about a hybrid. Um, so how do you run the hybrid offense, or or some coaches would call Princeton on steroids. Um, but if you like, if you've got two bigs, a lot of coaches would say, "Well, I can't run Princeton because I have two bigs." So what we would do is we would run some prints and some triangle because with a triangle offense, you can run it with two bigs. Um, or some coaches, a lot of coaches are, are really into the dribble drive. So am I um, for those games where you have kids, you have a little athletic advantage or you have kids that um, you just have, maybe you're the favorite in that game and you want to play a little more up-tempo. You want to give your kids more opportunities to drive and score. We'll put in the dribble drive offense and then we will phase into our Princeton and, and back and forth a little bit. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the, uh, I didn't put this on here. We're going to talk about the read and react too. So if you want to run a little read and react and a little Princeton, um, or a little dribble drive, little Princeton, little triangle, little Princeton, how do you run those back and forth? How do you make those smooth transitions? Cause you might say, well, triangle offense is really complicated. The dribble drive, there's a lot of stuff in there. How do you simplify those and, and, and mix them together? And it's, it's a lot easier than what you might think. Um, so week seven, that's what I'm going to be teaching these coaches. And then week eight, is going to be a very, uh, very advanced, um, almost, almost football, football style um, offense. Like, like it's kind of like if what if, if Peyton Manning were running Princeton, um, what would he do? That's kind of what Week Eight's going to be. So it's going to talk about you know, can is there a way where you can you know because you can just a lot of us right now just kind of 
we'll, we'll script out our first two plays of the game and then we'll go and run. Um, but then, uh, some like like in football, they might have their whole first series scripted out. Say hey, we're gonna, the, this, hey, this, we're running package one, all of this here, and we're running all the way through. Um, so, but a lot of coaches, say, hey, you know, we get the ball, let's run this play first, and then let's let's go to town. Let's just you guys do what you want to do. Or coaches are gonna call out plays every single series, um, just kind of with with no structure. So what I've seen Prince and teams do because there's so many counters, so many sets, they can. Um, they can sit here and they can run low post and they can they can screen the point like I just showed and the one can screen the two can go back door and we can throw it to the one and we can run point this way for the first four minutes and then the next four minutes let's come and run chin okay so that that take up your first quarter then the first start of the second quarter hey let's come back and run low post but let's not screen the point let's cut through and let's get this different action so what happens is is that defense is expecting what they saw that they say okay that looks like low post. But you run it a different way the start of the second quarter than you did the start of the first quarter. And now your defense is, is all messed up and they're all like, well, now they're guessed. They're trying to guess what you're doing. And then what you did for an entire four minutes of the game, now you're doing completely different. And it keeps them off guard. Okay, It's just another way to, to kind of give you the advantage as, as the underdog. So so that's what we're doing. We're doing week eight. We're also – so a lot of coaches will ask about um, – well, what if we're behind at the end of the game? Well, we put in uh, what we call we put in our uh, the basketball version, Princeton version of a hurry up offense of what what or, or of what a football team might do with a two minute offense. We kind of put in something similar to that um, with our Princeton is what we would call. Hey, we're down ten with six minutes to go. You know, we can't keep running this offense slow. We can't slow it down. We've got to pick it up. So we would put in a hurry up offense, something that we might not be able to. Um, sustain an entire game. That's why we're not running up and down the floor. But it's something that we can that we could probably sustain and we can make happen for us um, within a uh, within a two within a four or five minute period. So something we're doing offensively or something we do offensively and defensively. Um, so we're we're going to talk about um, advanced game planning um, through you know sectioning out our game, running something early on. Then we're going to go back to it and run run a counter and and then. Um, uh, then talk about a hurry-up offense if you're like behind. Fourth quarter, you're down 10, 12 points, 6, 8 points, um, or 6, 8 points with a couple minutes to go. You know, how do we how do we score a little bit quicker? How do we get scoring opportunities quicker? We're going to talk about that week eight. So that's that's pretty much what we what the plan is with the workshop. Um, if uh, it's uh, during the week, I, I close it down because we start teaching, and I, I just don't have the time um, uh, to – get other coaches on board and get them in. Um, last week we, we opened it up and, and a few coaches jumped in over the weekend. I'm going to do that again this weekend. So Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be open. If you want to get into the program or if you want to get into the workshop, um, send me a message or comment below uh, saying, Hey coach. Yeah. Hey, I, I want to get in and then I'll send you a message about how to do that. Okay. So it's not open right now, but, but Saturday and Sunday it'll be open because I'll have a little bit more time, uh, to to do that kind of stuff, or during the week, we're just doing so much. We're teaching three days a week, and I'm doing a lot of planning during that week. I just don't have time uh, to work on getting everyone in and making sure everything runs smoothly and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, <clears throat> lastly, I want to say if you have um, maybe maybe you're on the fence and you have a couple questions, and if you really want to, uh, um, if uh, some coaches have wanted to sit down, if you want to, um, what I've set up. A Calendly. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Calendly. Basically, you go in and, and I, I've set up some times that I am available. Um, if you want to set up like a 15 minute Zoom, say, hey, you know, I want to get in, but I have questions. Okay. If you have questions, um, I set up a, a page where you can kind of you can go in and put your name. You can sign up for like a 15 minute, and we'll Zoom for 15 minutes, just one on one, and um, and I'll answer any questions that you have. Um, so that if you you know if if you wonder about um, you know, about the payment plan or, you know, can my, or if you need to send a purchase order to get in, maybe you talk to your athletic director or your, your boosters say, yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're, we've had a lot of coaches get reimbursed from their athletic department or their booster program. If you have questions about how that works, um, you can, you can sign up and we can talk about that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post in the comments. Um, can I post in that comment? I'm going to have to go to the, the actual group. So here we go. So here is, See, sign up for
We'll call it a 15 minute consult. And I can't sp spell, how do you spell minute? M-I-N-U-T-E, there we go. Minute. I can't spell while I'm on this, so there we go. And there is the link to sign up for that. Um, I don't have, I have a, an hour tomorrow. Um, over the weekend, it's, it's kind of hard to actually schedule uh, time on there. Um, but I do have some time slots available for next week, and I have an hour tomorrow. If, if tomorrow fills up, I will go and 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 uh, schedule with my wife, and I'll, I'll I'll you know find another hour Saturday or Sunday that we can we can sit down and and and, uh, and do some talking. So there's an hour tomorrow, but all you have to do is click that link. It'll show my calendar. It'll show when I'm available, and you just have to sign up for a slot, and then it'll it'll send you a link uh, to the Zoom uh, for the Zoom meeting, um, and then we'll have 15 minutes that we can chat if you guys have any questions. Okay, and I think that's all I've got for today. Do you guys have any more questions? Any more X's and O's questions while you guys are on here? It's been fun. Um, so I did this. So I did this workshop thing before, but I did it last. It was last November. I got a late start. It was in the middle of the season, um, so we didn't have quite as many coaches involved. Um, but what we did do was. Uh, you know, we, we went went through the whole thing and it was great, but there's a, still a lot more that I wanted to teach that I wasn't able to. So this time around, we decided to make it eight weeks because there's just so much more that I wanted to teach. Um, and you don't have to, if you want to get in, but it, you don't have to feel overwhelmed that that um, you might be able to pick something up here and there. Or I, I know you're going to pick something up here or there about, about how do we enter an offense or how do we run or we're running chin, but what happens if you might, you're going to see a counter or a wrinkle that you can quickly add this season. Um, and uh, um, so you don't have to do a deep dive into it once the season starts, but we're still a month or uh, it's October. Yeah. We're still at least a month before a lot of uh, schools start. I know a lot, some schools start second week of October. Some schools aren't starting until um, middle of middle of November with their first practice. So um, there's plenty of time. So if, if you're, if you're one having a hard time getting started um, we simply, this, this isn't, a, this is a deep dive, but we also simplify it to make it easy for you to get started. That's what we did the first, uh, the first two weeks, or if you're, if you're already into it, um, and you want to have a resource to go to, if, if you feel like you're getting stale with what you're trying to put in, or if you want to, if you want to put in more, you don't know where to go. Um, I think that the, the workshop at this point in time would be good for you as well. So, uh, click on the Calendly link in the comments, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, I've got a, I've got more time uh, next week that I've, I've put on there over the weekend. I just don't know what my schedule is over the weekend, so I couldn't put a lot of slots in. I'm going to add some time over the weekend, but if you um, if you want to do a 15 minute Zoom with me, just to kind of chat about the offense, chat about where you're at, and if if the workshop is good for you, um, plus you get I mean the digital stuff, so you get the playbooks and the practice plans and all of that stuff. Um, the practice plans was seven, now it's already 13. It's going to be 21 by the time we're done, at least 21 by the time we're done. Okay, so if you want if you want to be able to see those, how do you um, start in the, in the low post quadrant or how do you start in the open quadrant and what would those practice plans look like? You can take those and then you can change them around to, to match your personnel, match match what you're doing. So, all right, you guys don't have any other questions. I'm going to get out of here and, and get on uh, with the rest of the day. Um, and I uh, really appreciate it. I, I, if you guys love the mastermind, let me know. Um, and uh, I, I, I would like to do another one, but again, it's, it's probably going to be next spring, next fall. So, um, but if you want to want to keep talking prints and want to keep getting into the X's and O's, um, then then click on the, the link in the comments, the Calendly link. Sign up. We'll Zoom for 15 minutes. We'll chat about it if you have questions. Or you can hit me up on Messenger. Um, or you can just post a, post a question in the group, and I'll try to answer in the comments. All right, coaches, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you again soon, and I'll see you guys on the court.